Hi, this is Carrie with Carrie Concealed and the Active Self-Protection Extra Channel. And today I thought it might be helpful if we talked about ways to handle or to get some help for holster hotspots. LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. All right, I don't know about you, but for training junkies, uh, folks that go to training regularly, uh, sometimes multi-day training with um, thousand plus rounds of ammunition. And then also sometimes for folks that are concealed carriers and do it on the reg, sometimes we can get hot spots on our holster or hot spots on our hands. And so I was gonna just share with you a couple of things that I've learned over the years that have helped me immensely. Um, and maybe you'll get some help out of them too. Maybe not, but hopefully a little bit. So the first thing I was gonna share with you is I really, really like this. Um, it's from Nexcare, N-E-X-C-A-R-E. -E. It's a 3M product and it's a uh, kind of a cushioned or padded uh, tape. They advertise it as being a waterproof tape. But for me, I like using it for all kinds of things. Um, when I'm training, I can. So I get it on in a six pack usually on Amazon. And let's say I'm having a little bit of trouble with my um, or Glock finger, people call it, or my, I don't shoot a Glock, but my um, uh, middle finger or flip off finger. Um, I can just put this around the outside of it like that. And I can get a little bit of a relief from that. I can, if I need to add a couple layers, I can to make it more comfortable if that's getting uh, a little bit hot. Another thing I've done with it in the past is I have actually put this on, uh, I was at a class one time and one of the uh, pins was backing out of my grip and uh, I had nothing to push it in with. I tried and tried and had nothing I could. So I just folded this tape up over it and uh, put the tape right over the top of it. And so I kind of put a bandaid on my gun so that it wouldn't tear up my hand so much. So I've also used this stuff in the web of my hand or the thumb crotch of my hand before. Um, I've used it on my thumb all over the place, wherever I need to, to get uh, Wherever comfort I can get, maximum comfort. So that's one option. Another option is something called, uh, I think they call it KT tape. And I'm pretty sure uh, the first time I was ex I experienced it was when I was at a physical therapy appointment with a hand therapist. And you can buy it in these big thick rolls on Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive to get them in a big roll. I usually take them and cut them down into smaller pieces or strips. So I like strips about like this, about that wide, and I kind of use them for the same thing, the same places that I use these. Um, I've also, uh, you know, been, when I've been desperate, used them at a place on my gun before as well. But this KT tape is some nice stuff. It sticks really well. I think this stuff sticks better than even this um, Nexcare uh, waterproof tape does. So those are some options that I've found helpful. So those are for hot spots that I get on my hand. Then um, let's talk about hot spots that we might get on our hand uh, also from the gun rubbing on our hand. And um, I like to use uh, some grip that's, uh, I think it's designed for tennis rackets or racquetball rackets. Yonex seems to be the best brand. I've talked to a number of tennis pros and uh, asked them what brand is best and why it's best. And Yonex always rises to the top. Uh, in those conversations, um, each of the people, actually, I want, this is kind of interesting, each of the tennis pros I've talked to, so four, yeah, four of them now, have said they prefer the white color tape, and the reason they prefer the white color tape, there's a little bit of stretch and give to it, but they like the white color tape because it allows them to see where their learner or student or where they are themselves gripping on the racket because that's where the you know color will be. And so it allows them to see any grip shift and that sort of thing. I have tried the white, but because my hands get so dirty when I'm at a class or teaching, um, the whole, not the whole, but a lot of the grip ends up being very gross and dirty. So white has not been my favorite color for, uh, for that. But um, anyway, I just wrap this around the grip of my gun. So I'm gonna all pick this gun up, keep it pointed in the direction of least consequence. And then I'm gonna grab it like this so you can see it. So you can see I've wrapped grip tape around this grip 
what I like about it, so I played tennis in high school, and one of my tennis coaches early on suggested some of this because it gets, uh, could be hot in the summers where I live, uh, spring and fall too. And so this grip tape absorbs sweat. And um, I've had some people ask, well, doesn't the grip tape allow the gun to shift inside the tape? I've not experienced that. I've only experienced it that it allows me to have a better grip and a more firm grip, and then it absorbs some of the moisture um, that I've had on my hands that I couldn't wipe off. That um, oh, Anyway, it allows me to uh, a better, more consistent grip on the firearm. So I'm not saying it's for you, but for me it's worked really well. So that is what I have for the grip tape. Uh, let's talk about then hot spots on the holster themselves. So one of the things that happens to me occasionally as a spot on the holster will dig into a certain part of my body. And when that happens, initially, um, I've just grabbed a, like a sock or a footy sock and folded it up and then kind of stuck it there. Uh, that was 20 years ago. Now we have great options like the Filster. Um, oh, I, they don't call it a wedge pack, but uh, anyway, they, they have a foam um, set that you can buy that will help you um, cover those hot spots. So I think that's the best way to go. But initially I used a sock because that was the only option I had. Um, Another thing that I've used to help with hot spots that's been super helpful is, actually I'll show you this first, is uh, it's foam insulation. I think it's for plumbers, but it comes in a roll like this on Amazon. I think, the, I mean, the roll was much bigger when I got it, but I want to say it was like $15 maybe, if that, and it's adhesive on one side, which is really nice. You just peel the, um, the paper back and it's adhesive there, and I like to use that. An example would be here on this holster. This edge right here of the holster was a bit hot for me, so I just wrapped it around that. Um, and I don't always take all of the uh, paper backing off. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to remove from the holster if I need to, but I have, this has been on here for probably a year or two and I haven't needed to remove it. But And you can stack the stuff on top of each other if you need to as well. So uh, these are, I, I keep a piece of that foam in my range bag so that I can uh, just address hot spots on myself or students if, they're, uh, if they mention it. Um, I can offer that to them as an option. So that's an option for a hotspot backing. One other thing that's worked well for me in the past is mole skin. And so I cut it out in the shape of my holster and paste it on the back of my holster. So here's an example of a holster that has, some, this is a different color of mole skin, but it's the same thing. And it just makes it a little more comfortable than having, for me personally, than having plastic touch me. I prefer to have this fabric. And yeah, it gets a little bit gross by the end of the day, but if I lay it out, it'll usually dry. Um, and get a little bit better. This strip is here. Um, the discoloration is because I had a foam wedge there for a little while that's I've removed now. So uh, another thing that I have liked to use um, occasionally is this is some stuff that um, I came in a, a computer case, a padded computer case, computer case. So it's like a neoprene foam type thing. And um, I have taken that and cut it to fit the back of my holster. Um, and then I use some like E, I can't remember if it's E6000 or E2000 glue or what have you. Um, and I just uh, use that to attach it to the holster, but that gives a nice padding there. And then also keeps plastic off of my skin directly. And yes, I definitely can wear um, like a wrestling singlet or a um, uh, tank top or camisole or something under my shirt. And that works great. But I live in a part of the country that gets hot enough that sometimes even that extra layer is a bit more than I want. Um, excuse me. And I definitely train in parts of the country where it's even hotter than that. And so for me, um, fewer layers, the better when it's super hot. So sometimes adding a little bit of thin layer to the back of my holster helps. Um, and then last but not least, uh, so I'm not saying that anyone should go out and dremel their holster, but occasionally I have had some hot spots in my holster that were, the plastic had a little nub on it or something sharp. And so I've used my dremel tool and these little buffer pads you can get really inexpensively. They have different grits and uh, just in that area to shave down the, uh, the uncomfortable places. So I hope that something there has been a little bit helpful for you. Uh, in case you ever deal with holster hotspots. And uh, 
I think that's it for now. All right, see you next time.